Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gamer here, and today we're back with another Honkai Star Rail build guide video, and I see a lot of guys overcomplicating this character. He's actually very simple to play, but you just need someone to break it down for you real quick. And don't worry, by the end of this video, I assure you that the hardest thing about this character will actually be to pronounce his name in a proper Chinese pronunciation, which is Luo Ta. Now let's get into it. Okay, first things first, you see this field that is active, this is his passive ability when it's activated. Now we start off here because it's easy to understand when it's actually active and to understand what it does. So this passive, you see this background here with this like flowery thing around, this is his talent and once you hit like a certain amount of stacks, uh, he will automatically activate it, attack the enemy, you also heal. So it's something like a pseudo life steal, quite simple so far to understand. Skills off with attack and that's important to know because this character generally will scale more with attack than HP and etc. like other healers in the game that we have. Uh, that is for his talent passive. So now I'm gonna just show you real quick, I'm just gonna just auto attack. His basic attack has no enhancements, very, very simple, very straightforward. I just use his E, set away some HP to be able to like proc Lotar's passive in a little bit. And you see here, uh, actually Arlen managed to get a bit of uh, sustain from the attack because of this talent field passive. Now I'll let it go away so that the rest of his kit can actually take place. Okay, now that that field is away, we can start to exactly see what it looks like when you are starting the match without the technique. For example, here we have zero stacks on the flower real quick. And if we use, for example, E of Arlen, Lota has a passive that when any character drops below 50%, they will actually have an auto heal from Lota, which we will look at in a little bit. Let's just demonstrate, it's easier to see by action. Okay, so that is the demonstration. He immediately followed up with the heal. As you can see, now it's still his turn. He also gains one stack to contribute to that passive ability of his fail. Uh, what that comes from is actually his skill ability. So basically, any character that drops below 50%, he has an auto heal uh, to buff up that character for sustain. And of course, with a bit of traces, he also cleanses debuff. Very similar to Natasha that we are very familiar with already. So that is how his kit works in general. Uh, so it doesn't use up any skill points. So for example, now if I press his E again and I cast it here, he will instantly get another stack here and his passive will also fall off. Let's take a look. So okay, back to the very familiar uh, passive ability that is happening. And last but not least, uh, his kit is his final part here, is the ultimate ability here, which also generates Abyss Flowers. And one thing, uh, a tricky thing to note is, when you use this ultimate ability real quick, you want to make sure that this uh, Abyss Flower, if you know it's going to end already, make sure it ends first and you have that 0 over 2 before you cast the ultimate ability. Because if I cast it, for example, now, the one charge of Abyss Flower is actually not going to count towards the next setup. So time your ultimate correctly, you'll get used to it after a while. But that's basically a small little gimmick that you can play. Pretty straightforward. Let's just take a look at what it does. And let's jump into the trace real quick. So his ultimate ability basically simply just removes one buff from all the enemies and also deals imaginary damage. Very very strong ability because it makes him a little bit more of an AoE damage dealer. Helps you get rid of all those Mara struck with all those reviving or lifesteal buffs that they have as well. Very strong ultimate ability, also good amounts of imaginary break damage. Now, now that we have seen his kit in general and how he works, what are the recommended allocations to his tracers then? I think that all of his uh, abilities are very very important because as you can see he rotates from his normal attack to grant like um, skill points, he uses his skill very often as well to uh, heal up his entire team. This uh, passive field that he has pretty much is the one that gives your whole team uh, sustained healing as well. So if in my opinion, all of his tracers should be leveled up equally. If you were to pick and choose, I think skill should be the one that goes up first, followed by his talent ability if you want more healing for these two portions. His normal attack probably will be like the lowest priority since it's just a slight increase in damage. Of course, his ultimate is very strong because he adds on significant amounts of damage as well. So these two, more of a sustain, these two more of damage pick and choose wherever you want. Major Tracers on the other hand is very very strong. His Cleansing Revival here basically gives him like a free debuff for his skill. Basically it's the same like Natasha as well as like March 7 for example. Very good in especially in the early game meta where we are seeing a lot of debuff enemies in the memory of Chaos so far. And as for Sanctified, another bonus ability. This one is very strong because the if, when the character is attacking and gets some life steal, he also shares the entire healing with the entire team as well based on Luata's attack. So very nice to spread out the healing a little bit and it also gives uh, the feel, this is what I mean by a little bit more of a sustained healing where even if your characters are slower, maybe they don't really attack as often, at least they still can get some sustain from the AoE attacks as well. Very very strong. 
one thing that we noticed so far in his kit is he doesn't have like an emergency panic button heal for your whole team that a lot of us might be used to if we play Natasha. His healing is actually a little bit slower compared to like a character like Bai Lu, Natasha or even Japat's thick shield as well because a lot of his healing comes from taking action or uh, getting attacked and if we are often at very low life, getting a fatal attack uh, might be not even enough to survive and we won't even get this sustained up as well. So that is just something to consider, considered as a relatively higher skill character to play because of this lack of a panic button other than this emergency 50% but it's only one target. Last but not least, bonus ability uh, through the valley. Crowd control debuff increased by 70%. A lot of people are going to be looking at this and also uh, factoring it in when building him, uh, which means that he may not need as much effect resistance as other characters because he already has quite a significant amount of crowd control debuff. Just some things to consider as well. Okay, like cones, he actually has quite a few options. Out of all of them, uh, four stars, let's start about four stars first. I think quick pro co is gonna be interesting to use since every time the wearer starts a turn, you get eight energy for randomly chosen ally. Good amount of uh, team buffing for energy. If you have this already, maybe build up, I think he can use it quite well since Lota does build a little bit for speed to get his uh, passive off cooldown too. I think it's gonna be very recommended, quick pro co, uh, very useful for him. Other than that, if you have Shed Feeling, I think it's also going to be a decent option. Uh, when he uses a skill, regenerates 2 energy for all allies. Probably will work for his passive healing as well, the passive 50% uh, heal. So good amounts of energy restoration if you want it to spread across a broad team. At the same time, it also gives you outgoing healing bonus uh, too, which is really nice to have on the side. So I think Shed Feeling, Quid Pro Quo, both of them are pretty solid options to have. The two that I don't really um, think that is very useful right now as of currently 1.1 will be post-op as well as perfect timing. Uh, why perfect timing may not be super useful is he already has 70% uh, crowd control debuff. But in future moving forward, if we have more gear that scales with effect resist resistance, for example, maybe a new relic set that scales off with it, or maybe enemy monsters are becoming super strong that need has a super high amount of debuff rate, this is going to start to come into play. But as of 1.1, maybe not yet. Uh, it gives good amounts of re uh, effect resistance though, and it also allows speed scaling, or rather it, it also benefits outgoing healing when you have effect rest. So I think in future, this will be very interesting, but requires two conditions to be met. Enemies becoming more able to land debuffs, as well as maybe more scaling off of effect rest from a relic set. That will be interesting to think about as well. But for now, uh, not very recommended in my opinion for the near term. Post-op conversation, why it's not as good is definitely because of the outgoing healing here in ultimate, which means that you only get an 8% energy restoration rate in the first uh, step that you have. Other options, other better alternatives exist already like quick pro quo, shared feeling just does a lot more. Um, I think that one that I want to point out that is going to be very good from the standard shop as well as time waits for no one. This one gives him good amounts of max HP which he doesn't want to build into, he always wants to build to attack which means naturally in his kit he's going to lack a bit of uh, HP making him squishy. If you guys are always noticing your Ting Yun or your Esther getting always beaten up because they have very very low HP uh, that's because uh, and that's going to be very similar to Luo Cao who doesn't really want to build too much into HP stat as well. So I think this is going to be good to diversify into this. Outgoing healing is very nice and on top of that you also get a bit of damage every time time uh, for example you clock in some healing you also deal a bit of damage on the side very good in my opinion for a standard of uh, a free if you pick it up in the shop as well uh, last but not least let's talk about the battle pass one this warm uh, shortens cold nights increases wear max hp by 16 percent this is uh, again good for the same reason we talked about for the standard five star and of course when using basic attack or skill restores all allies hp by an equal to two percent of their respective max hps this one is going to be not as useful maybe uh, for luota since uh, it's based on of the character's max hp as well that means the ally you are healing i don't think it's going to be as useful since he already has pretty good amounts of uh, healing on the side not really very useful in my opinion but if you have it lying around and you want to use it, it's not going to be totally useless as well. Um, let's talk about his his own signature. I think this by far is going to be his best in slot. It gives him everything he needs. Uh, attack for more healing, more damage on the side from his ultimate as well. And of course, he also gains some uh, energy uh, sustain for himself. And at the same time, you also speed buff the entire team. And with this, he really becomes more or less like a complete healer and he segues very nicely into Eidolons as well for any of you whales. I think this is a tremendously useful uh, light cone for him. It significantly outperforms the other alternatives basically because it gives him so much that he requires. Like attack stat, healing stat, uh, energy as well as also buffing the team. Very, very rare 
from a harm and uh, for abundance character point of view in my opinion i'll talk a bit more uh, in another video that i want to do more in-depth analysis on this slight cone and his eidolons too but not for this video which is for the general population okay relics i think it's pretty straightforward as of 1.1 1 .1. uh what's interesting is if there's going to be any upcoming uh, sets which i will uh, put in the video description below uh for example if there's a new video that i'm putting out because of any new information that we get in future i don't think there might be who knows right i'm just gonna put that disclaimer out there but for version 1.1 pretty straightforward we can go with a four piece mask of wild beat um, if it's a very general set, increases your speed for him as well, which he does scale off with. Attack improves his healing too, so I think he's very strong. The alternative, if you don't want to run maybe a 4-piece Musketeer of Wild Beat, you could of course run like a 2-piece uh, Passerby of Wanderer Crowd and 2-piece Musketeer of Wild Beat to give you this outgoing healing and also a bit more attack, which also benefits your healing too. Uh, I wouldn't go and push it all the way to 4-piece because this is not really very important. Uh, you only get it at the start of battle, so in my opinion, there are better 4-pieces that exist. 2-2, I think will probably be my recommendation for general people. Uh, for those of you who are a bit more adventurous, uh, like my build that I'll be showing you in a bit, I will actually recommend Wastelander of Banditry somewhere, either as a 2-piece or even a 4-piece for those of you who are running with maybe debuffing characters as well in your team. Uh, it could be very good because crit rate, crit damage is not easy to obtain for a character that uh, like Luota, who has a lot of other stats to build into already, like maybe speed, he also wants to build into a little bit of uh, effect rest, especially with the difficulties too, and attack percentage as well. Crit, crit rate, very nice found in 4-piece, which is hardly found elsewhere, and he benefits from it because he does imprison enemies, and if you're running in an imaginary team, you do get a lot of value from this basically free crit rate, crit damage. So I think uh, this one is considered. But I'll talk a bit more in a little bit later on, or maybe in another video where I show his damage potential showcase too. So that is for the main sets that I have. For the planner ornaments, I think, in my opinion, Fleet of the Ageless probably would uh, be better than the rest of them. I think Fleet of Ageless is going to outperform because of its general purpose. It increases all allies' attacks, which benefits him a little bit for his healing. It makes him more of a supportive role, buffing the whole team's attack. HP, as mentioned, 12%. Uh, is significant especially for a character that doesn't want to build too much to, to HP uh, you don't want him too squishy also because if not he's going to be feeling like Tingyun or Esther which is so so squishy and always gets targeted as well healer you don't want him to die too fast too so that's why I like the 12% nice 12% HP bonuses the other options and there are quite a few will be for example space ceiling station this is more selfish compared to a fleet of ageless which buffs the entire team this one buffs specifically himself which in turn give you more like healing bonus also so I think both will work depending on what you're looking for or whether you are maybe running him already with an attack buffer in your team. If your build is going to be what similar to mine, you don't have attack coming from a lot of your main stats, this is going to be use useful to like supplement that 24% attack, especially if maybe if you don't like run with Esther or another Harmony character that buffs attack, for example. Like if you don't run with Kong, who already gives so much uh, attack from her buffing Roaring Bow Strings too. So, uh, that is my thought process. More selfish, this one is more versatile, uh, especially if you don't have attack buffer and you might want to consider this one as well. But most of the time, I don't think so. Inert Sal Soto, pretty useful also because he gives him crit rate, he gives him ultimate uh, 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 bonus damage as well. This one is more selfish, more of a damage role, which doesn't really fit into his overall kit. Some of you might want to use this, but if you have other DPSs and you are going to use it for him, I think you might want to use it for other imaginary damage dealers that you might have uh, also. I think Yukong can use it quite well too if you really wanted to play that style. So those are my thoughts for those. Uh, other than that, Sprightly Von Wack will be definitely another one that is worth considering too. Energy restoration rate of 5% and generally he moves quite fast. Uh, he can proc this but I don't think it's as useful putting this on him as some other characters in the game. Maybe even Yukong, Bronya. Uh, Ting Yun, Esther might be able to use this slightly better or maybe even Pella will want to move a little bit faster too. Uh, but you can use it if you have an excess piece lying around. Overall, I think that Fleet of Ageless might benefit him more uh, just from the thing, from the facts mentioned above. And that's like the sets. Let's talk about uh, main stat as well, substats that I'm looking for and I built as well. Okay, as mentioned, so uh, in the previously, the sets that I chose for my account is Fleet of the Ageless as well as a 4-piece Wastelander of Banditry Desert. That I'm going to be planning to run him with perhaps a team of maybe Weld uh, as well. So I get a lot of debuffs coming from Weld already. So he's able to prop this. Doesn't have to come from him directly, which means he basically gets free crit rate, crit damage uh, from his overall kit. I'm planning to run with an attack buffer like Yukong. So I supplement a lot with attack buffs as well. But don't worry, I won't give you like one main stat. I'll give you a couple and recommend you according like to the style that you can consider. Just giving you more information to consider as well. 
Um, for the substats, I'm basically looking for crit rate, attack, HP is nice, crit damage is nice, speed is of course valuable. So five things that I'm looking for. Uh, basically pretty much like a normal standard DPS that he skills very similar to as well. Effect rest probably be like the six because 70% crowd control debuff is not 100%. A bit of effect rest still does help out a little bit as well. Just to make everything more guaranteed. So that is for my glove and hat. For my um, uh, body here, I'm using outgoing healing bonus. Some people might be thinking outgoing healing bonus versus attack, which is better. I think outgoing healing bonus is likely going to outperform, especially since uh, attack percentage can be found very easily from your supports, from fleet of ageless and other other stuff that are much easily obtainable. Outgoing healing bonus is not so easy to obtain, maybe only from light cone main stats and stuff like that. So I do prefer uh, the outgoing healing bonus. For those of you who maybe don't have this and you want to find something, uh, maybe you want to complete your set, attack percentage I think will be fine in the meantime, but know that you eventually want to switch over to outgoing healing bonus. For shoes on the other hand, I think speed is definitely going to be the best since he wants to get off that uh, passive cooldown that he has because he uh, that healing basically is free, doesn't consume any skill points when uh, characters drop below 50%. Having more speed means he basically indirectly does more attack, the deals more damage from his ultimate, gets more uptime from his ultimate because of more indirect uh, energy restoration. Speed, I think, number one. You could run attack percentage if you really wanted to, but uh, I don't think it's going to be as useful as speed for this particular character as well. Um, Planosphere, imaginary damage bonus. I think it's pretty straightforward. You could run attack percentage or HP percentage if you find him a bit too squishy, or maybe you are not even blade building him for a damage dealer. Uh, as well, maybe you are still in the early to mid game, you want to scale him up later on. You can first run a HP first attack percentage and put your better gear on like your main imaginary DPSs. So I would say that this is also quite flexible depending on whether you're playing more offensively or defensively. Uh, that is the factor that I will consider. Last but not least, of course, the rope. I think the rope is pretty straightforward. You want to run energy uh, regeneration rate. His, up, his ultimate ability is very strong also because you get a free flower stack and you only need two to activate his passive. So very nice to quickly prop that passive fill the more times you have his ultimate up. I uh, highly recommend energy regeneration rate. But it's not easy to find. I think the chances of it dropping is not as high as like some other ones. If you uh, have no choice, you could run attack percentage for more healing, for more damage as well. HP percentage, if you're finding him too squishy, maybe you're running a team that is going to soak damage across the board and have no shielder as well. So some things to consider for relics. Uh, let's talk about Eidolons. I'm going to go through real quickly because this is a uh, 5 star after all. It's going to be a bit whale. And in my opinion, like long story short, I think this character is excellent with Eidolons. Probably out of all 4 limited characters that have been released so far, this character is the best whale character have. He, his playstyle changes significantly with Eidolons and he's just so so tempting, uh, especially for a play to play player to think about. He increases attack when the field is active, making him an insane attack buffer. With his light cone into perspective, means he's an attack buffer, a speed buffer, a healer, can cleanse as well, can remove enemy debuffs, almost like a complete unit already. And um, E2, when his skill is triggered, if target is lower than 50%, his HP is increased by, uh, his healing is increased by 30% as well. And ally also receives a shield that can absorb damage if the target is uh, is at 50% or higher. I think this is much more versatile, very similar to what we see from Natasha, just that it also has this uh, additional shield element when it's above 50%, making it just more useful overall. And of course, his skills of attack are unlike others with skills of HP. Uh, E4, when Lotar's field is active, enemies become weakened and deal 12% less damage. This is on top of the, the other buffs that he has already, making now, him now also in an indirect sense a debuffer as well, when his field is active the, to make enemies deal less damage. Very very insane character, tons of value coming from a one supportive uh, role as well. And when his ultimate is used for E6, he also becomes a rest shredder. This unit is absolutely busted at E6. I'll make another video talking about uh, my thoughts of this character but in uh, for those of you who are watching till this point not many people might watch here because it's like a pay to win portion in my opinion he's a very very solid character probably more or less perfect in my opinion for a harmony character he does one of everything does offensive as well really really very very impressive but now let's go on to the team compositions because nothing to do about individual strengths it's all about a team game in Honkai Star Rail Okay, long story short, I think that Luota, some of you are already looking at this video for characters in future. Blade and as well as Ireland probably will be the characters that work better fit well with him because they are able to proc his healing even without enemy attacking them. They have some sort of uh, damage on their own. Uh, if you, Ireland does like to be at lower life and Luota does heal him up quite a bit. 
but I think it is still okay because better than dying, I think Ireland does quite good damage as we saw in the earlier clip. Even at full HP, he still does decent amounts. Of course, he benefits a little bit more from being at lower life. So that is like the first consideration for mechanics where characters auto set their own HP. Other than that, characters like Clara, which I do not have on this account, will also work very strongly with him because of his ability to like have that pseudo lifesteal element. Other than that, really, most teams will generally need a healer as well. He offers good amount of offensive ability. And of course, the team that everyone probably will be interested in will be like a full... Let me see if I can find her right here. A full imaginary team real quick. And I'm just going to put like a placeholder here. Some of you already know why he's a placeholder, but I'm just going to put him since... He's done him, right? So this team will probably be a really strong one as well. Uh, you have a good amount of damage coming from your Han DPS, uh, Win DPS Dunhang here, and eventually maybe, who knows. Uh, you Kong for harmony buffing, a lot of attack buffing. You have debuffs here, able to proc his uh, four-piece banditry set, as well as giving him good amounts of attack, giving him everything he needs from support role as well. I think this is a, a setup that I really, really like and would definitely want to explore once the time is right as well. And if you guys want like maybe more team compositions and maybe you're interested to know about Yukong as well, uh, I definitely will be having more videos. I have more videos on the channel which I'll link right here and here. You guys can check it out as well. And thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. I do this every single patch and you found the information helpful. Do leave a nice comment. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.